This lecture is Anatomy and Physiology Respiratory System. As usual, as usual, we have an outline of this lecture. We will talk about the pleura, the diaphragm, lung structure, bronchial tree, and the mechanism of gas exchange. Let's talk about the pleura. The pleura is the membranous covering of the lung. The lungs are surrounded by pleura. There are two layers. There's the parietal pleura, which is the outer layer, which is adherent to the inside of the chest wall. Then we have the visceral pleura, which is the inner layer adherent to the lung. The pleural space is located between the parietal and visceral pleura. And this pleural space is a potential space. It's typically non-existent. Let's talk about the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a large dome-shaped muscle which is located at the bottom of the thoracic cavity and is responsible for breathing. By the way, the diaphragm is skeletal muscle. It contracts and allows for the lungs to expand during ins inspiration. And it, when it relaxes, the lungs deflate during expiration. It's innervated by the phrenic nerve, which is formed by the nerve roots of C3, C4, and C5. Remember this. C3, C4, and C5 keep you alive. And just in case you wonder what the phrenic nerve looked like, it's right here. And you can see it coming off C2, C3. Uh, excuse me, you can see it coming off C3, C4, and C5 right here, coming down. And it runs on either side of the pericardium to innervate the diaphragm. And just in case you didn't quite get the point that the diaphragm helps you breathe, you can see this picture. When the diaphragm contracts, you inhale. When the diaphragm relaxes, you exhale. Now let's talk about the structure of the lung. You have a right lung and a left lung. The right lung has two fissures. You have the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. There are three lobes, upper, middle, and lower lobe. You have, and of course, each lobe has a bronchus that goes to the lobe. So you have three lobar bronchi. The left lung, on the other hand, has one fissure, which is the oblique fissure. You have two lobes, an upper and a lower lobe, and you have two lobar bronchi, one to each lobe. Let's talk about the blood supply to the lung. And recall from the cardiovascular heart lecture that you have pulmonary arteries and veins. The pulmonary arteries supply deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle into the lung. So you have your left and right pulmonary arteries. You can kind of see here, the pulmonary arteries. You have the pulmonary veins, which drain oxygenated blood from the lungs into the left ventricle. So you got two pulmonary veins on the left and then two pulmonary veins on the right. You can't clearly see them, but trust me, they're there. And one thing to note is that normally arteries carry oxygenated blood, but here the pulmonary blood, the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood to the lung is the only artery to do so. Pulmonary veins generally drain, generally carry deoxygenated blood, but in this case, the pulmonary veins are draining oxygenated blood from the lung. Okay, so please understand that. And the hilum in each lung, this is the hilum, consists of a main stem bronchus, a single pulmonary artery, and two pulmonary veins. Now let's look at the bronchial tree. So the bronchial tree starts with the trachea and it bifurcates at the level of the carina, which is here, into a right main stem bronchus and a left main stem bronchus. Each main stem bronchus gives off lobar bronchi. Okay, so you got your lobar bronchi here. 
okay? So this is an example of a low bar or secondary bronchus. So, so here and here. And each, and each low bar bronchus branches into a segmental bronchus or tertiary bronchus. So you've got your primary bronchus, which is your main stem bronchus, secondary bronchus, which is your low bar bronchus, and tertiary bronchus, which are your sub segmental bronchi. Now let's talk about the mechanism of gas exchange, because that's the function of the lung. The function of the lung is to, is to, allow, your, is to allow your body to absorb oxygen so that it can use it to survive and excrete carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of metabolism. And gas exchange takes place between the capillaries of the lung and the alveolus. And in case you're wondering what an alveolus is, it's these little sacs. These little sacs. And oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse across the wall of the alveolus and capillaries. And the respiratory membrane consists of the wall of the alveolus. So you got the alveolar wall, the capillary wall, and then there's a basement membrane, which is not labeled here in between. So you basically have carbon dioxide and, and oxygen diffusing across a membrane that's two cell layers thick. And these gases diffuse according to the concentration gradient. So oxygen diffuses into the, into the bloodstream, carbon dioxide diffuses out of the bloodstream. So carbon dioxide diffuses out of the capillary into the alveolus, oxygen diffuses into the capillary and is delivered back to the heart to be pumped to the rest of the body. We're done. Like this video, subscribe. Thank you.